NASA may be testing its last ever rocket. Here's why. As NASA successfully moved its massive new space launch system rocket to Pad 39B at the Kennedy Space Center on Friday, March 18th, ready for tests that pump more than 3.2 million liters of cryogenic propellants into its tanks, space site Ars Technica explains its role in carrying the Orion crew capsule could be the last time NASA attempts to build its own rocket in-house for financial and logistical reasons. The background is this. After committing in 2005 to return humans to the moon and then push on to Mars through its Artemis program, the cost of NASA flying one Orion and SLS mission per year has spiraled up to $4.1 billion, while numerous delays have pushed back launch days repeatedly. The SLS's first uncrewed mission, Artemis 1, could be ready to launch in June, but this schedule has already seen its first crewed mission, Artemis 2, pushed from April 2022 to May 2023, and its first crewed mission to land on the moon pushed from 2024 to 2025, according to Gizmodo. Now, Ars Technica suggests that such problems and the expense behind them can largely be attributed to a funding structure built by Congress, which has prioritized hiring contractors across 50 states, rather than allowing private sector-funded rockets like SpaceX's Falcon Heavy or its forthcoming Starship vehicle to power the project at lower costs. The site summarizes, NASA could have just bought launch services from the private sector at a significant discount and focused its own efforts on developing technologies such as in-space fuel depots, propellant transfer in orbit, and space-based propulsion. This situation leads the site to the following seemingly dramatic conclusion. The combination of cost, time, and the existence of companies with currently better setups makes it unlikely that NASA will take on another equivalent project in the future. Of course, there are two things that can be said on this. First, other conclusions are available. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson, for instance, appeared to say in September last year that a lawsuit by Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin company had also delayed things. Bezos lost the court case over the $2.9 billion contract to build a lunar lander given to Elon Musk's SpaceX, and Nelson, cited by Gizmodo, said the trial ending would allow for progress on the Artemis program. This leaves room to believe it is not simply a matter of NASA inevitably being slower than SpaceX and others, but some outside forces also contributing. Along the same same lines, glitches like the one reported last January occurring when NASA strapped the massive moon rocket onto its massive test cradle and started to fill it with 2 million liters of liquid hydrogen and 742,000 liters of liquid oxygen are obviously not all Congress's fault. There, after around 60 seconds, controllers witnessed a flash next to the thermal protection blanket covering engine 4, and shortly afterward, that engine registered a major component failure. This kind of problem can presumably happen wherever the funding comes from, though of course the way projects join up can eventually affect technical issues like anything can. The second thing to say, though, is that outside of the funding issues, the end goals of deeper space exploration embodied by Artemis are widely agreed upon as pretty cool and shouldn't be forgotten. Last April, NASA released spectacular images of its Lunar Gateway space station, for instance, generating widespread excitement. NASA describes the station as an outpost orbiting the moon that provides vital support for a sustainable long-term human return to the lunar surface. Gateway will work as a kind of pit stop for astronauts on their way to the moon, with astronauts delivered to the surface of the moon via a lunar lander built by Elon Musk's SpaceX. Eventually, it is hoped that Gateway will operate as a staging point for missions to the moon, but it could also operate as a port for spacecraft going beyond the moon into deep space. It is, in short, the kind of project that's worth arguing over. Space.com reports that NASA will send astronaut dummies around the moon in the Orion spacecraft for the uncrewed Artemis I mission scheduled for next year. According to the outlet, NASA says the goal of the mission is to test a new piece of equipment designed to protect female astronauts from space radiation called the AstroRad. According to the European Space Agency, the pair of phantom dummies named Zohar and Helga are fitted with over 5,600 radiation sensors. Zohar will wear the AstroRad protective vest, and Helga will not, which will help researchers evaluate the effectiveness of the vest. Makers of the radiation vest, a company called STEMRAD, say the vest protects the breasts, bone marrow, stomach, ovaries, and other vulnerable organs that contain stem cells via its variable thickness shielding. According to the Tel Aviv-based contractor, the contoured shields are solid polymer shielding elements that are arrayed in a scale-like structure. 
STEMRAD claims its vest could allow astronauts to leave the Orion Solar System storm shelters to perform important tasks during a solar storm. According to the company, the vest significantly reduces cancer and other fatal radiation exposure risks for astronauts. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.